First of all, let's uh, see where we are. Leomyoma. Leomyoma means uh, tumor of smooth muscle. When it happens in the uterus, you call it as uterine leomyoma or uh, uh, fibroid, right? So basically, leomyoma is uh, benign condition of the smooth muscle. When it happens in the uterus, that is when we use the word fibroid uterus or fi uh, yeah, uterine leomyoma. You can say. The it can affect the uh, body of the uterus and the cervix. In the body of the uterus, it can affect the uh, myometrium, mainly myometrium. So uh, that will be called as intramural interstitial. This is the most common, 75%. Then you have uh, subserosal. Then you have uh, under the uh, endometrium, if it is there, it is called a submucosal. So uh, the mainly you have to remember three things, okay? Submucosal, subserosal, uh, intramural. Okay, intramural is most common. In so here you can see just under the uh, endometrium means it will be, just under the endometrium means it will be submucosal. Subserosal will be here. And in between these two, you will have the sub, uh, sorry, intramural or the in Testicial. This is the most common. Okay, the middle one is the most common. Okay, so uh, you can understand that these are the three main things that you have to know. So the intram intramural guy is sitting in the middle, right? So he cannot have a pedun. He cannot be pedunculated. But the subserosal can be um, subserosal can be pedunculated. Subserosal can be pedunculated. Submucosal also can be pedunculated. Okay, so pedunculated uh, options are there for whom and all. Subserosal and submucosal. Intramural does not get that option. This one will be subserosal, uh, which is pedunculated. Okay. So the same thing they have represented here in such a complicated diagram. Here they have shown you the subserous one, which is pedunculated, and here they are showing you hanging down from the uh, cervix. This is the submucous one, which is pedunculated. Okay. Now uh, let us look at the causes of uh, leomyoma. Basically, it's an estrogen-dependent tumor. You just blame estrogen. Some people will have some family history and all that. Some growth factors like epidermal growth factor, insulin growth factor, transforming growth factor. You blame all the growth factors. This is what is stimulating the growth, right? And um, if they have taken high dose estrogen therapy, right, then they can have uh, leomyoma. So what are the risk factors? Let us look at. Uh, uh, the risk factors for uh, what are we looking at? Leomyoma. Okay. So, a nulli paris woman, that means she never actually uh, delivered a baby. Right? Yeah. So, basically, in this person, what happens? Uh, <clears throat> uh, they will uh, see if you get pregnant, right? Your body will take a break because progesterone will be um, there and it will not allow the uh, estrogen effect, right? So, uh, if they have not got pregnant, then what will happen? That break will not be there. Right, so an aliparous woman will be at high risk because of estrogen effects. Then people who are taking having an hyperestrogen state, PCOS also is a hyperestrogen state, right? That is why they are having uh, no LH surge and less FSH and all. PCOS also can have uh, can go into leomyoma. Okay, everything else uh, you can say family history etc. Now uh, who won't have the risk of uh, leomyoma? Leomyoma won't be there in uh, people who have menopause, let us say, reduced risk. Why? Because menopause is low estrogen state, correct? And combined overkill contraceptive pills, if they are taking, they are taking both uh, estrogen and progesterone combined. So what will happen? They will be getting their periods regularly, correct? So they will not be having only effect of estrogen, okay? And multiparity, if you have given birth many times, then you have a break from the estrogen. Now, what are the clinical features of uh, leomyoma? So they can be asymptomatic, they can be totally fine. They can have abnormal uterine bleeding, right? Imagine if you have uh, these kind of growths, what will happen? Your 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 uh, uterus will think there is something inside and will try to keep pushing it out. So there will be pain in these people. There will be a lot of bleeding and infertility because this will not allow anybody else to settle and grow because uh, this thinks the fibroid is something and it is it will think that it has to be thrown out or it is the baby or you know that is the problem with leomyoma right so uh, these people will have recurrent pregnancy losses they can have abdominal pain pelvic pain abdominal enlargement the abdomen itself can be huge right pressure symptoms they will have right <clears throat> they'll have also pain during intercourse that is called as dyspareunia okay so all this you will write now um, See, pathology, uh, everything has been covered, right? In pathology, you have looked at the gross specimen, how it is looking. This is intramural, most common, right? So this is the microscopy, how you have a lot of smooth muscle. That's why they said it is smooth muscle. Is, um, it's the tumor of the smooth muscle. Same thing they have shown here, and there was a lot of hyaline deposit here. So they are showing hyaline deposit, okay? This is leomyoma. You can see the muscle, right? And look at this uh, hyaline, hyaline change in leomyoma. 
So this is hyaline change in leomyoma. So this is all the microscopy. So if uh, this uh, uh, leomyoma progresses, it can become leomyosarcoma, which is cancerous. This is cancer, right? Sarcoma. So not good, right? It can progress to become sarcoma. So that I'm in the high uh, view field, is it? What is HPF? In that you will see mitosis. So in the microscopy, you will if you see mitosis, etc. Based on that, you can say it is progressing to myosarcoma. Our video, uh, our intention in this video was to look at what the fate of fibroid. Okay. So let us look at fate of fibroid. One fate you already understood. What is that? Leomyosarcoma. Yes, very good. It can go into sarcomatous change, which is written here. Let's go part by part. Don't don't worry. So what happens to the submucous fibroid? So we told you that uh, submucous means where is it? Come here. Submucous guy is here near the endometrium. So it's just below the endometrium. So this guy can become pedunculated and it can, um, you know, uh, it can be like this. So a submucous fibroid can pedunculate and become like this. So this is called as a polypoidal change. So it's a polypoid, polypoid, polyp is it? Polyp. So this is a pedicle formation. Okay. And the surface can undergo necrosis. There can uh, be infection of this. And there can be sarcomatous change, which we just now told you, leomyosarcoma it can become. So this is the fate of submucous fibroid. What are the secondary changes in fibroids? In a fibroid, what and all can happen? Hyaline degeneration, which we showed you in the uh, microscopy, right? So it can undergo hyaline degeneration. What are the degenerations it can undergo? It can undergo cystic degeneration, fatty degeneration, calcific degeneration, red degeneration. So calcific, it's undergoing so many types of degeneration. Calcific means you can... So the whole thing will become like a calcified mass. Usually it is for the subserous fibroids that this happens. So it is called as womb. Um, it can also be called as womb stone. It will become a calcified mass hard. You can understand, right? Calcific degeneration. So um, are you understanding what we are looking at today? We are looking at the uh, changes that happen in the fibroid. So uh, how does this look to you? This is intramural, so I don't think uh, this will. Cal uh, this is the calcified because calcified they said will happen in what? In the subserous one. So let's draw that here and try to see. So here if you see calcified subseries. So this will become womb stone. Okay. So what is this red degeneration? Carneous degeneration. During second half of pregnancy and puerperium. Okay. So vascular in origin. So basically they are saying in pregnancy they are saying. Okay, second half of pregnancy, it can happen. So what else can happen to these uh, fibroids? They will degenerate, okay. They can become atrophy. Atrophy is good, you know, it's, it's just uh, going away. Especially after menopause, what will happen? They will regress in size because estrogen will reduce. Okay. Because there is no support of estrogen, the growth has to subside. That's nice. Atrophy is going to cure it. What do you say, people? Pregnancy will increase it. And after pregnancy, again, it will reduce. After pregnancy, after menopause. Okay. See, pregnancy will increase. Correct. That's what they said. Then, necrosis. It will undergo necrosis. We already told you this, isn't it? In the beginning only we told you. See, surface necrosis. Here also they are saying necrosis. Okay. <clears throat> infection this also we already told you vascular changes dilatation of the vessels telangiectasis then dilatation of the lymphatic channels lymphangiectasis etc 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 vascular changes then sarcomatous changes we told you that it's a very rare though but it can become leomyosarcoma okay that based on the mitotic figures you can decide whether it is becoming sarcoma what you see here is a Myoma. It is not leomyosarcoma yet. Okay. Then. Now let's proceed guys. What are the changes that happen to the organs around this? Okay. Now let's look at this. So we looked at all the changes that happen to the uh, fibroid acid. Then let's look at the changes that happen to the pelvic organ. What are we looking at today that we want to look at around the fibroid also? The changes um, uh, of uh, due to fibroids. What was the topic name guys? Just tell me the slide name. Fate of fibroid. Okay. 
fate of fibroid. So this makes sense, right? So we will look at everything. Fate of actual fibroid we have seen. Associated around changes also we'll look off. Okay. Now, what will happen to the uterus? The shape will get distorted. Uterine tubes, that is the fallopian tubes, can get infected. Right? So the shape of this uterus can get deformed. That one of those diagrams was showing like that. Deformed. Tubes are infected. Ovaries are enlarged. Ureter. See, the ureter is somewhere here. The ureter gets displaced. Let's draw ureter in blue. So the ureter will get displaced. Endometriosis. That means the endometrial tissue is found elsewhere. Because obviously fibroid, if it is sitting inside, it will throw out all the endometrium kind of a thing. You can remember like that. Endometrial carcinoma. See, estrogen will have uh, this kind of effect, right? Endometrial carcinoma. Estrogen leads to the same thing. Endometrial carcinoma. Now let's go to this uh, table here on the uh, right or left. What do you say? Let's go here. Complications of fibroid. Now what do you think will happen? Same thing they have written again and again and again. Don't worry people. We will just close this video very soon. So what and all will happen? Complication of fibroid. You have to explain to the patient. Oh, what are the complications of fibroid? They will ask you. Then you will say. See the complications of fibroid are degeneration, necrosis, infection, sarcomatous change which is rare. Torsion of the pedunculated fibroid. If, this, if the if the fibroid is like this and it is pedunculated, it can it can it can get twisted, right? And it can become strangulated and all that torsion, torsion. It can lead to hemorrhage. So these people can have lot of anemia. Intracapsular hemorrhage can happen or rupture of superficial vein, etc. Polycythemia can happen due to erythropoietic function of the tumor. This is very interesting. This is something new guys. Focus here. So what they are saying here is that are you focusing people? Polycythemia can happen because this fibroid uterus, sorry, this fibroid has some erythropoietic function. It tries to create blood cells which is very interesting. I would love this actually. Hmm. But it is creating too much and creating problem and creating polycythemia. Okay. Okay, fine. Oh, it is also uh, affecting the kidney because of pressure and kidney will start making uh, erythropoietin. Kidney's function is to make erythropoietin, that is make, that makes sense. But kidney will start making altered erythropoietin because of ureteric pressure, because the ureter is so pressured. If ureter has pressure, all the backflow to the kidney, kidney has pressure, it's making more erythropoietin looks like. It's polycythemia. Interesting. So then uh, come to the small table here, guys, this one, this one. Can you see here that there are types of degeneration? You have hyaline degeneration, cystic degeneration, fatty degeneration, calcific red necrosis, same thing. Okay, red is rare, they are saying. Guys, um, again, we covered the same thing, types of degeneration. Now, let's go to the last table here. What are the life-threatening complications of fibroids? See, what the previous table was, was the complications of fibroid. But now here, there's one more table here, which is talking about the life-threatening complications of fibroids. So, let's look at this one now. Life-threatening complications of fibroid, please. Let's look at this one. What do you think will happen? She'll have anemia, severe. Is that life-threatening? If it is severe. If there is the rupture, intraperitoneal hemorrhage. I don't like that. Severe infection can happen. Peritonitis septicemia, sarcoma red, sarcoma, cancerous change. See, one thing what they told you, anemia. Severe anemia because it will cause a lot of bleeding. Then it will cause uh, if it ruptures etc. intraperitoneal hemorrhage and then it can lead to infection and then sarcoma. So these are the life threatening complications of fibroids. Okay. So this is what we wanted to cover in this video. Fate of fibroid. So here you can see the hyaline change in leomyoma. Do you want us to zoom? The hyaline change in leomyoma. Okay. So here's the leomyoma specimen, gross specimen. So here you can see the cervix, here you can see the uterine cavity, right? And here you can see the intramural leomyoma. Next, what do we have to cover after this fate of fibroid? We have, we have to look at the investigations, same things, the ultrasound, MRI, laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, histosalpingography, x-ray, that is with contrast, uterine curettage to check about the endometrium, right? Uh, so all this you will do. And then differential diagnosis people, uh, you should, uh, what are the differentials for a fibroid? So it could it be a pregnancy, could it be a full bladder because of uh, if you're feeling the mass, if there is adenomyosis, right? Um, if it is a myohyperplasia, that is the myometrium is just uh, hyperplaced, okay? That is too many cells. 
ovarian tumor it could be an ovarian tumor or a tubo ovarian mass these are the differential diagnosis then we will treat treatment do you want us to cover in this video itself okay let's look at it um so basically they are saying that uh, new uh, low dose oral contraceptive pills can reduce it in size i saw the total cure but it is saying they are saying that new dose oral contraceptives can reduce size so guys um, treatment of uh, fibroid uterus we look at in the next video basically based on whether it is in the uh, body of the uterus or the cervix they are telling some things like if the person is asymptomatic and if the size is small just keep observing and if the size is increasing or if the size is so huge just remove it surgically if she is symptomatic that is if she has symptoms does she desire to have a family if she desires to have a family try to minimize the blood loss and try to reduce the size of the fibroid by giving so many drugs else again you can opt for surgery which is uh, um, if she is not desire of uh, of uh, having pregnancy or if she is uh, yes focus here or if she is uh, having such a big one that you have to operate on it right then what in all the surgery options you have you have uh, myomectomy that is you can just work on the myoma and remove it right myolysis see this myoma screw and all is there you know that uh, that screw that we have like this they'll put that screw inside and pull out that myoma right so my uh, all that is there here embolotherapy they can do embolization so that it doesn't uh, have any blood uh, uh, feeding it vessel blood vessel feeding it then hysterectomy removing the uh, uterus itself right so that is uh, some things so those are options then coming here um, uh, look at this one if it is in the cervix of the uterus then what will you do you'll just go vaginally and you can remove it okay so that's it so um, protocol of management of uterine fibroid basically there is a lot of detail about uh, the uh, drugs that to use like you can use um, anti progesterones uh, gnr analogs anti gonadotropins like danazol you can use some intrauterine system to release some uh, hormones then uh, oral combined contraceptive pills will reduce the size and all this so basically you should understand that um, uh, what was i trying to say treatment of fibroid uterus is basically you want to reduce the size of it or you want to remove it or you want to remove the uterus itself okay bye bye